food and financial crisis had uh, a, an enormous impact on people on, on low incomes. People who were spending already uh, as much as half their income on food uh, were finding themselves forced to spend even more. This had an effect on the quality and diversity of the food that they could afford. Uh, and it also had this enormous impact on, the, on their way of life. Um, they were having to find ways to earn more cash and they were having to squeeze more value out of, uh, of what they could buy and what they had at home. The report is the culmination of four years of, of research uh, done as a collaboration between Oxfam, the Institute of Development Studies and research partners in 10 countries. We went over the years uh, repeatedly to 23 communities in urban areas, rural areas and, and on, on the edges of, of large cities. Um, and each year we went back to the same people and we asked them about everyday lives. We asked them about what food they were eating. We asked them about what work they were doing and how they were caring for one another in response to food price inflation. Across all the sites in all the different countries, we, we learned from people that the way they were eating had changed really quite significantly, differently in different places. Um, urban areas were different from rural areas in particular. In rural areas, we were finding more women going out to do paid work, which meant they had less time to cook. They were quite often telling us about buying pre-processed food like noodles, which speeded up the process of cooking. In urban areas, people told us how uh, they were relying more on street food, on fast food, and they, they were eating fried uh, stuff which was high, high calorie, high energy, high in salt and fat, very tasty, very quick and very cheap. And people told us how they were worried about these, these new food habits that had sort of taken over their lives. Um, they were worried about the quality of the food, whether it was nourishing or not, whether it was hygienically prepared. Um, they, many people were very sad about the loss of traditional foods. Uh, they saw these as being um, more nourishing, but also a whole culture being lost of a way of eating, a way of sitting around the table with the whole family. Um, whereas nowadays you're just grabbing food on the run because you, you don't have time and you can't afford uh, the old ways of eating. To pay the higher cost of food and to uh, pay for the increasing number of, of uh, essentials in life, people were uh, going out and looking for work more than they had done before. So people who had previously been homemakers were now out, the, out on, the, on the job market. And the kind of work that they were able to find was very often dangerous work. It was insecure work. Uh, the kind of work where you don't know where you can find it from, you don't know how long you can have it for, the wages are uh, very low and in, in no way secure. So work was very precarious and time for uh, looking after the rest of the family was squeezed. So what we're seeing here um, is a new globalised era. We're seeing a, an era in which uh, more and more people have become part of the market economy. Um, this means that we really need to rethink social protection, the, who it is that we're protecting and what it is that we're protecting them from. So what that means is, yes, in the first instance, it is important to protect people on low incomes against the effects of, of unexpected and really rapid price shocks. Um, it's vital that governments continue uh, doing that. But at the same time, they need to start considering how to protect informal labour, uh, how to protect people from the dangers of... of, of um, work that is uninsured and very risky. Um, they also need to be protecting or supporting women uh, in the work that they're doing, which is very often highly informalised uh, and at the same time put under enormous stress by the need to also be providing care for their families. So it also means that we need to uh, make particular efforts to protect what children are eating, uh, protecting them perhaps from the effects of 
advertising for highly processed, highly packaged foods, uh, supporting the efforts of, of parents and schools um, to uh, make sure that they're getting good nourishment and that the choices they make in life about, about food are, are sort of formed earlier on uh, in terms of food that's nourishing and diverse. So what we are saying is that if you are going to understand the changes that are happening and you're going to be able to respond to it uh, as a global agency, as a government, as, a, as an advocacy group, uh, you, you're going to need uh, data that allows you to, s to measure this change. Uh, and so that's what we're calling for, data on women's work, on informal work, on food habit changes. We need to give recognition and support to activists around the world who are working on promoting the right to food. In different countries people are doing this in different ways, but it's incredibly important that they're putting pressure on governments and larger agencies uh, to promote not just a right to food, but a right to good quality food.